Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name's Wyatt, and today I'll be teaching you how to script a team change GUI on Roblox. Okay, so before I show you how to make this script, I just want to show you how it works. So all we have to do is head right into the game, and as you'll see, if we click Team 2, it'll set our team to Team 2, and if we click Team 1, it'll set us back. Okay, so now that you know what this script does, I actually want to show you how to make it. So the first thing that we're going to have to do is actually create our teams. And if you already have this done, you can skip over this part in the video. But I'm just starting with an empty base plate, so I'm just going to create the teams right now. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to click on this Insert Object button up in the top of the Model tab. Uh, and I'm just going to search for Team. And you have to do it like this so that the Team folder comes up in your workspace. So if we just search Team in this tab right here and then we click on it, as you'll see, we just drag it over like that. It'll insert a Teams folder just like this and then it'll put our team under here. Now this is just a normal team. It's a blank team. It's white. It's boring. So I actually want to make it a little bit interesting. So I'm going to give this team a name uh, and for right now I'm just going to name it Team 1 but you can name this whatever you'd like. Uh, and I'm going to come over to the Properties panel and I'm going to set the team color as well. Now what this will do is if we go into the game just like this, it's going to create a team and it's automatically going to set us to that team. So if we go in, you'll see, see, team one, orange dude, 4221. Now this is one team, awesome, but as this is a video for a team changer GUI, we need to have more than one team. So I'm just going to duplicate this or you can copy and paste it. Uh, and I'll name my second team, team two, and I'll set the team color of that to blue. Uh, and then if we go into the game again, we can test this out and you'll see Right now, if we look in our tab list, we have Team 1, which I'm automatically on, and then Team 2, which nobody's in. Um, so now what we need is actually, we're going to work on the point of this video, which is a Team Changer GUI. Something where people can click on different buttons and it'll change their team in-game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new screen GUI under Starter GUI. And I'm just going to name this Team Change UI. And UI is just means user interface. I don't put the G. You can do it. You can name it whatever you want. Um, so inside of this, I'm going to put a new frame, and you can, again, you can set this GUI up however you want, but I suggest doing it the way I do it, so the script works exactly how I have it set up. So I'm going to create a new frame, and I'm just going to do a little bit to it to make it look nice. I'm going to do a little bit of scaling. Uh, maybe I'll set the background color to, to maybe like a dark gray type color. And I could even, if I wanted to, I could set the border transparency to zero, just to get rid of that nasty border on the sides. Just like that. And then we have our frame. Uh, and I'm just going to name it Teams Frame. And underneath this frame, this is where we're actually going to put the different buttons that will allow the user to change their team. So I'm going to create a new text button. And this is going to be our first team button. So I'm going to name this button. This is really important, so make sure you pay attention. You have to name this button whatever the team name is that you want it to switch the player's team to. So if I want when the user clicks this button to switch their team to Team 1, we're going to name this button Team 1. And it's important you do that because of the way the script works is it actually gets the team from this folder using the name of the button itself. So it's really important that you do that just so that it doesn't get messed up and it actually gets the correct team. Um, so I'm just going to scale it, you know, do a little more UI formatting on this. Again, you could, you know, format this however you want, but I always like to make my UIs clean so that my users understand exactly what they're supposed to do. Uh, and another important thing, if you're getting into scripting or you're getting into Roblox UI design, it's important that you make your eyes uh, intuitive, right? So that users can understand how to use it without even having any instructions. So it's a very important thing, uh, and I'm just going to set my font right here to cartoon, make it nice just like that, change that border, get rid of that again, of course, and we'll just scale it down, we'll make it just a little bit smaller, and we'll position it right here in the UI. Uh, and that's it for our first button, we created the button, now we actually have to script it. So that's the hard part of the UI design done, now you can follow along or copy the code from the description to actually script this. So I'm going to create a new local script, very important, it's a local script underneath this button right here. And I'm just going to name it Team Changer. And this script is going to go underneath every single button. We're not going to do like a global thing or anything. We're just going to copy the script for every button. Um, in here, this is actually a three line script. Very, very, very simple. We're just going to say script.parent, which is the team button. So when we're going to get a reference to that button. So script.parent.mouse button one click. So whenever they click, we want to connect it to a function. 
And then inside of that function, all we're going to do is fire a remote event. And the remote event's what's actually going to change the player's team. And the reason we do it with the remote event is because if we change the player's team, we have to do it from the server side so it changes for all the players. So if I was to do it from the local script, it would look like I'm on a different team for me, but if my friend was playing, it would look like I'm on the old team. So we have to do this with the remote event from a server script. So I'm going to create a new remote event under replicated storage. Once again, you guys could create this anywhere that's replicated to the client. Uh, and I'm just going to name this event change team event. Uh, and then in here, in, under service script service, I'm going to create a new script. And this is what's actually going to hook in to when this event is fired. So I'm going to name this change team script. Again, you guys can name it whatever you'd like. Uh, and then in here, this is a very short script once again. So all we're going to do is we'll say local teams equals game colon get service teams and this gets a reference to our teams folder right here so we can get the children underneath of it uh, and then here we're actually going to catch into when that remote event is fired so we'll say game dot replicated storage dot change team event which is our event that we're firing from the client dot on server event and then we're going to connect that to a function so with, whenever it's fired we're going to run the code in here so in here i'm going to say local physical team color equals and then before I define that I want to explain what that means so when you change teams on Roblox one of the ways to do it and the way we're actually gonna do it is set the team color we set the players team color rather than the team just because you know we expect that you're gonna have different colors for all your teams so we're gonna get the color of the team and we're gonna set the players team color to that color so I know that sounds confusing but just follow along so in here actually before we define that variable we have to get two parameters First, we have to get the player object, and then we have to get the team. And this is just the team name. It's not actually the team itself. It's just the name of the team that we're going to be passing into this remote event. After this, we can come back down and define our variable, physical team color. We can just say teams, colon, find first child. So we're going to get a child that has the name team. So if let's say we fire this event and we pass in team one as our argument right here it's going to find team one. It's going to get us a reference to this object. And then we're going to say dot team color. And that's just going to give us the team color property. So the color of the team, which in this case is really red. And then from here, very simple. All we have to do is say player dot team color equals physical team color. And that will set the player's team color to really red, which will in turn set them to team one because team one is really red. So we have that, and then we just have one more line. We have to come back to that local script we were looking at earlier. And then in here, we're just going to fire that event. So game.replicatedStorage.changeTeamEvent. And we'll say colon fire server, just like that. And then we're going to pass in the name. As I was saying earlier, it's very important that you name these buttons right, because we're going to pass in the name of script.parent. So if we say script.parent.name, this is going to fire that event and team, right, that variable that we get, team is going to be set to team one. But if I was to change this to team two, right, it's going to pass in whatever the name is of that button. So it's going to say team two. So right now we only have one, so there's not much point. Um, we can just set the text of this too. So what we actually want to do is create another one of these. So I'm just going to duplicate it. You could copy and paste. Um, but since the script's done, that's all you have to do. You just copy and paste this and it'll work automatically if you just change the name of the team to the actual team that you want to change it to. Um, and I'm just going to say team two instead of team one. And we can actually go into the game and test it. And it should work just fine. All we have to do is if we say, if we so right now we're on team one, so it's not going to do anything. But if we click on team two, it'll set our team to team two and it sets it on the server side. It sets it for everyone. And if we click team one again, it sets us back to team one. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you learned something new today about scripting on Roblox. As always, I'll have the Paceman link with the code and the Roblox model link with all the assets shown in this video in the description. And I'll see you guys later.